My name is Kodiak Justice. Um, Kodiak at first glance means bear and at second glance means island. I'm sarcastic, I am a musician, I uh, am a multi-instrumentalist, I rap, I'm a vocalist, I'm a producer. Taking it real far back, I had dreams in which I was a grown man when I was like five years old. Um, and I actually just like, the dream was that there was this bunch of women around me slowly taking off my clothing. <laughs> like this is like a repeating dream that I had when I was too young to know what sex is. I didn't really know what to do with that. I didn't tell anyone about it. Um, I never talked about feeling like I was a boy as a kid. Um, I just kind of like, I'm not gonna think about that. Puberty, I just became pretty depressed. I remember when I was in like eighth grade, um, telling my mom at one point that the only emotions that I feel are anger and sadness. And um, she's like, well, that's, that kind of hurts me to hear. You know, you were a really happy younger child. I didn't know why I was depressed. I, did, I was terrified of all kinds of sexual encounters that were starting to now happen to me or be like a maybe thing and like, ah, uh, you know, like I, I was just anxiety ridden the entire time of like my sexual upbringing. I, I don't know how else to say it. It was just a lot more of like n not allowing myself to think too far into it. That was probably what made me survive because I was in Ohio um, at that point in my life. And I think Ohio late 90s, early 2000s would have been a real shit time to come out as trans. As a, as like a young, young adult now out on my own, being in college, being a college freshman, I started being really promiscuous <laughs> because I was trying to figure out why people liked sex. I didn't get it. Um, it wasn't super pleasurable for me and I kind of thought maybe none of these dudes know what the fuck they're doing, so maybe, <laughs> maybe this other dude knows. You know, I was like trying to find out what the deal was and like um, not realizing that depth with one person would probably be the way to do that. I took a lot of LSD and a lot of mushrooms at that time. Um, I had a devastating issue with my jaw, which probably those drugs contributed to that, <laughs> where I was majoring in saxophone and I had to drop out because I couldn't play my instrument anymore. Um, I was at a major loss of what to do with myself. I became an alcoholic for a little while. It got to a point where that wasn't helping me um, escape my problems anymore and I needed to confront them, so I moved away. I abruptly quit drinking. Um, I got a full-time job in a different town you know, continued to sleep around, trying to figure out the deal <laughs> with the sex. Um, went through some relationships that, if I knew now what the deal is, they probably wouldn't, either wouldn't have happened in the first place or they would have gone very differently. It wasn't until I was in the ashram for and had been for a few years where I realized I started to realize that I might be trans so while I was there like I think the process of of people trying to to like make you less of who you are um, eventually you get to a point where you can't take that anymore and um, you start being very much who you are. You know, like, there's something in you that like aches to get out. And for me, like part of that was, was acknowledging that I'm male. <laughs> the last year that I lived in the ashram uh, was when 
Laura Jane came out is when um, my former teacher's son Taylor came out. His mom and dad, who were like the spiritual heads of the center, were like not being cool about it at all. Um, and that's kind of where that plus other things, like I was starting to see cracks in what was around me. Initially, I came out as non-binary and I still stand by that. Um, gender is complex, I guess. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I came out to a couple of people around me and then I just came out on Facebook. <laughs> it's just like, everyone at once, fuck it. Um, I wrote like this nice, fairly vague message about how um, I would like to have people use he or they pronouns for me. And um, I had some very, awkward reactions, mostly just from family members. Um, everybody else was super cool about it. You know, there's like this flurry of, I love you for whoever you are, I love you. You know, like, almost like, I don't really want to hear about it, but I do want you to know that I love you, whoever it is I think that you are. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of that, and then um, my dad refused to acknowledge my my name. And he's like, "You're not, you're not that though. You're not transgender. You know that's a hard life. You don't want that." He refused to use my name or my pronouns, um, and he uses names very often. That's just like a thing that he does. Like name plus last initial, which is the same one as his. It's like this clan bonding thing. My uncle, who was kind of my other main father figure, uh, rejected me. He was like, we were tight, I thought. Um, he, tried to have an intervention with me on the phone by himself about being trans. And um, he said some really terrible things, something along the lines of how I'll never be a man, or he could never acknowledge me as one. Um, and he said that he was never going to use my name. And I said, well, you can't be in my life then. <laughs> and I hung up and I bawled my eyes out and I called my mom with my dad it took like a year of me just taking it and not knowing what to do every time he would dead name me before I was I was like I have to I have to fucking and and tell him <laughs> and it was terrifying I was at work I was um, I was doing Grubhub here in the Springs at the time that was a very short period of time um, but I was having to go into restaurants in between, like, I did this through text because I have a hard time uh, getting a word in edgewise with cis men. I, I had this tough conversation where my dad was, like, resisting me and resisting me, and I was like, no, you need to do this. Like, um, it hurts me when, when you don't call me the right name, you know, like, you are hurting me. And he didn't get it. He, he just, he said things like, fuck your name change. Um, you know, none of any of this matters, we're family. You know, like, stuff that doesn't make a ton of sense. But he's basically just trying to be like, don't be trans, please. <laughs> but eventually, when I texted him that I was bawling my eyes out, too hard to go into the restaurant to pick up the food that I needed to pick up, that's what made it click for him. Like, he needed to be aware of how much pain <laughs> I was in um, before he was willing to get on board. Um, and 
he sends me cards regularly, like for holidays and stuff, and I have started saving them again, you know, because like I, st I was throwing them away for a while because they didn't have the right name on them. And then they started coming with my real name and that was like the best shit. I don't think he's ever gonna know how, how big of a deal it is. He lives in Atlanta. We live far away because every relationship requires the exact right amount of space. And for us, it's Colorado to Atlanta. Sometimes there are people that you don't, you just can't fully explain something to them. Like you know that they're just never going to get it and it's like always going to be lost on them. So you just kind of have to like, Thank you.